The thing I love about being a math teacher is that there are so many different ways to come up with an answer. So like in English, a verb is a verb and a noun is a noun. And in math, there's an answer, but sometimes in class we can have four different uh, ways that a kid came up with the answer and I love that there's these different paths that you can take and I love uh, letting my kids share those paths and understanding that there's not just one right, right way to do something. Why did Drew put 62,800 on the left side of 63,000? With the, the implementation of the, uh, the new standards, I think that the thing that's changed the most in my classroom is that I've had to take a step back. Um, I'm now more the, the facilitator, the person that asks the right questions to get my students to move in the direction that I want them to. And I feel like before these standards, I was the teacher showing students what to do. My role has changed a whole lot. So instead of being the, hey, this is how you do it, it's what question can I ask you, which is really hard. It's really hard to come up with those questions um, to guide those students uh, the, the right way. They're, this classroom is more student-centered instead of teacher-centered. It's not about me, it's about them. What's the key? Not just that the digit is a particular digit. What's the key? That's what I want this group to focus on. Okay, what's the key? Most of the times we share our ideas with our classmates and with our group and we go up to the board and like point to an answer or something like that. I think Miss Callahan's a great math teacher because she um, she always likes for us to work in groups and I like working in groups. It's fun for me and if I get the wrong answer I get helped by my group mates. If you get it wrong, like they other kids can like help you. If you like working by yourself, you can you gonna be like, how did I get this wrong? The way I got sixty-two thousand five hundred fifty-four is because um, I rounded the because uh, the number sixty-three thousand. The biggest impact I see that the standards are having on students um, at a very uh, young age is understanding. So it's not just about the process anymore. It's not just about coming up with the answer. It's about understanding why. Why when you multiply two digit numbers by two digit numbers, on the second row do you put the zero? So now that students don't just learn a process, they, they have real meaning about the math that they're doing. And so when you have real meaning, it, there's real understanding. You don't forget, you can't forget it when you really know it. Give a thumbs up if you agree with Thomas, thumbs down if you disagree with Thomas. So everybody said 62,500. Very nice. So it's not that it's the five, it's that it's the, it's the halfway mark. The standards really came and just opened up, broadened our horizons a bit, pushed us to that rigor that we weren't offering before. I mean, you know, in Oxford, Oxford has an awesome school district, so it's very rigorous to begin with, but the standards brought us a different level of rigor for all kids. So it became now, it's not just your kids who were coming in who already had that level, all kids. Now we're talking equity, so big deal. Before, we were more textbook curriculum. We went by whatever the, the, the series was where we were using and reading. Uh, but when we got the standards and we actually start to delve into the standards, uh, the teachers start to go by that. And we actually start using the textbook more as a supplement, which is what it's intended use for it anyway. For Mississippians, I am tired of hearing that we're last. And I think that if rigorous standards are the key, I think that we should all be on board to push our kids to be more so they can compete with their neighboring states. Um, I, I think that it's the most important thing as an educator that we can do for our kids. It's the legacy that we can leave for our kids. So you're thinking about the numbers that are being posted. In order to think about the, no the numbers you're that are being posted, you actually have to look where? At the, at the yes! Should your pencil be in your hand? No. No! So everybody's looking this way. We're going to start with Leland. He's going to quickly come up and this is going to go quick. But your 
using the brain right now. We've gone from I made all A's all the time to now I make a C every now and then. And the conversation then changes to what do I talk to my parents about whose children are used to making straight A's. So it has been a very interesting conversation. Um, but I think the more we talk to parents about what the standard requires, and it's not just a recall, it's more or less can you apply what the standard is asking you to do. We Parents are now on board. They understand, okay, you want them to go deeper than what they were doing before. I'm a Delta girl, being from Clarksdale myself, so there is always that demographic where it is more difficult. There is more hardship and there is more economic circumstances for those children. Being, uh, I also went to Natchez for a short time and those children were, I mean, when you have a 99% uh, free and reduced lunch, so you're looking at different struggles than you have here in Oxford. But to see a set of standards that make all of us on an even playing field, it creates that equity piece that all of us can say, this is what makes a child successful, whether you live in the Delta, whether you live in Oxford. That's the important part. My favorite subject is math because it's challenging, but sometimes you don't realize it because it's so fun. My favorite subject is math because you get to deal with numbers and it's more challenging than reading. I like math the most because, well, number one, it's my best subject. And number two, math is more challenging for me and I like to be challenged. My favorite su subject is math. My favorite subject is math. Math is my favorite subject also because, like, I like to be challenged. They love math. Um, they don't come loving math. It, at parent night, um, you have parents saying, oh, my child is not really good at math, but you never hear somebody come in and say, my child's not good at reading. So it's like, that's not acceptable, but saying I'm not good at math is acceptable. And it, it doesn't take very long at all. Um, I'm so excited about the work that I get to do, and I'm so excited about the math that we get to do. We relate it to the real world. Um, I show my students how it's applicable, and they just, they get so excited about it. Drew, call on somebody to tell us the number that runs in, that's in the middle. Talk. Don't ever say that a child can't do something, because they will surprise you and do it.